What kind of best brunch, mate? Are you, um, are you nearly ready? No, mate, I can't come up. I think I'm nearly there. Mate, are you, are you still on the first question? Mate, that, that can't be normal. Is that, is that normal? Well, that's just it, isn't it, mate? I don't, I don't know! I don't know what's normal! This doesn't feel normal! Hey everybody, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. This is actually the first day of isolation for me. And I thought, you know, we'll do question one from the calculus paper. Alright, I hope your results went well, by the way. Um, yeah, and this is a tough one. This is such a cool integral. And it took me quite a long time to actually get this solution. But here we are. So, first thing, I know it's here, right? It's 16x squared minus 8x plus 1. Well, I can just rewrite that as a perfect square. Alright? So, that can be rewritten as 4x minus 1 all squared, right? And how does that help? We don't know yet, right? And then I thought, well, what's something else that we've learned in the first term? We learned about symmetric intervals, right? Integrals over symmetric intervals, where, you know, the top number and the bottom number, the two limits are the same, but they just, you know, they differ by a minus sign. So, how can I make this symmetric? Well, if I decrease a half by a quarter, what do I get? A quarter. If I decrease zero by a quarter, I get minus a quarter. Okay, so that would be plus a quarter and minus a quarter, which is symmetric as we want, right? So let's go ahead and try that substitution. Let's try u equals x minus a quarter, right? And then, of course, well, 4u is going to be equal to 4x minus 1, exactly as we have here, and x is going to be equal to, well, x is going to be equal to u plus a quarter, All right? Now let's just plug that in, okay, so I'll switch to red pen because we're in the u world now, so I have a quarter as my upper limit and minus a quarter as my bottom limit. Here, I have 4x minus 1, which is nothing but 4u, and then that full thing is squared, so we're going to get 16u squared, and then we're going to have the exponential of, well, I have cosine pi x. Okay, but now x is nothing but u plus a quarter. So I'm going to have cosine of, well, pi times u plus a quarter, which is pi u plus pi over 4. Right? And then, well, this term is repeated on the bottom. Okay, and then, of course, the term next to it is exactly the same, but it's just a sine instead of a cosine. So let's just get all of that written down. Cosine pi u plus pi over 4. All right, and as I said, very similar, but now it involves a sine here. So we have sine, oops. So we have sine pi u plus pi over 4. So much writing. Boom, right? And of course, because the transformation is linear, du is going to equal dx, right? And now what the hell do we do? Well, one thing we should do is neaten this up, right? Instead of cosine pi u plus pi over 4 and sine pi u plus pi over 4, let's use our addition formula to try and simplify that, right? Well, I'll do that off on the side. Okay, so first of all, let's try cosine pi u plus pi over 4. What's that going to be? Well, if you remember your addition laws from A level, that's going to be equal to uh, cosine pi u. And then we're going to have sine pi over 4. And then it's a minus, right? It's going to be minus sine pi u. And then it's going to be cosine pi over 4. Okay, but cosine pi over 4 and sine pi over 4, we know what that is. Those are both equal to square root of 2 over 2, right? So I'm going to bring out a common factor of square root of 2 over 2, right? So I'm going to be left with just this, right? And now I can do a very similar thing with sine pi u plus pi over 4. Okay, so let's try that. All right, so let's just divide it up neatly. So we're going to do the same thing with this, right? With the sine. Uh, pi u plus pi over 4. Okay, and what's that equal to? Well, it's equal to cosine pi u, and then we have sine 
by default. And then it's going to be at when we use the sign, you know, the, the addition of a sign, it's an at. And then what we're going to have, we're going to have sign value and then cursine pi four, right? And again, we can bring out the cursine pi four and the sine pi four because those things are equal. And what are they equal to? They're equal to the square root of two over two. And that's all going to be times by cosine pi u plus sine pi u, right? Okay, so these two expressions differ only by the, the sign here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the expressions involving cosine and the expression involving sine and just replace it with the simpler versions I just found here. Right, so I've just substituted that in. Now, let's ask ourselves, why did we do this in the first place? Why did we try and get a symmetric interval? Right, well, what do we know about all functions? All functions, let's say, you know, f of u, can be written as their odd part and their even part, right? So, you know, we have f odd, and we also have f even, right? This is a fact that all, all functions can be decompose into these two parts, right? But what do we know about f odd, odd? Well, when we integrate an odd function over a symmetric interval, that's just zero, right? And then we're just left with this thing, this integral, right? And we can simplify just a tiny bit more, right? In fact, this integral is the same as just twice, ugh, chewing gum, <laughs> ugh, uh, twice, um, the integral from zero to the, the right end point, right? So we're just left with this, this expression, okay? And what is f even? Well, as a reminder, f even, that's just gonna be f of u plus f of minus u divided by two, okay? So if we plug that in here, right, we get f of u plus f of minus u, and then over two, right? So these twos are gonna cancel, and we're just left with this expression, right? Just copy it over here. We're just left with this, right? So that's why we introduced the, you know, the symmetry. So we can just use the even part of the function. All right, so now I'm just gonna write down what this is, okay? Remember, f of u is this entire thing, and then to work out f of minus u, I'm just going to plug in minus u every time I see a, a, a u. Right, so I'm just going to really quickly copy and paste this. Right, so I've just pasted that. Right, this is f of u, and this is f of minus u. Every time I've seen a u here, right, I've just replaced it with minus u. Okay, now let's do some simplification. So we have 16 times minus u squared. Well, that's just going to be the same thing as u squared. Right, so let's just write that in. u squared. And then it's the exponential of all this thing. I have cosine of minus pi u. Okay, well, cosine of a negative angle is just the same as cosine, right? It's, a, it's an even function, right? So that's going to be the same as cosine pi u. And then I have minus sine of minus pi u. Okay, well, sine is odd, right? So when I have a negative input, well, I can just bring that to the front. All right, so that's going to be a plus sign. And on the bottom, same thing, cosine is even, but sine is odd, right? So a negative sign inside, you know, inside the brackets can be brought out to the front. Right, so let's just do that one more final time. Okay, so here it was minus pi u on the inside, so I just changed the sign on the outside, right? Again, because sine is odd. Right, so now what do we see? Okay, well, on the bottom here, right, I have this weird exponential thing, but it's cosine of pi u, right, cosine of pi u, plus sine of pi u, right, same as I have here. So, so this expression here is the same as this expression here. And right here, I have cosine of pi u minus sine of pi u, right, exactly as I have here, right? So in fact, the denominators of these two expressions are exactly the same. So I can combine 
these two things into one fraction. Right, so, so this expression on the top can be brought up front, so let's do that. So we have 16 u squared. All right, well, I'll introduce some brackets, okay, because obviously that's common in both of these things. So 16 u squared, and then I have the exponential right up here. So we're going to add on the exponential of square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2, cosine pi u, I'll keep the colour the same now, plus sine pi u, right? Okay, so now I can get rid of this. Okay, well, now what do we see, right? Well, now in fact, look at this. Right, we have cosine pi u minus sine pi u, exactly the same as we have here. And then we have cosine pi u plus sine pi u, exactly the same as we have here. So in fact, right, and of course, you know, we have the exponential of square root 2 of 2, that's all the same. So in fact, the numerator and the denominator are the exact same, right? And what does that mean? Well, that's just another way of writing 1, right? So the denominator and the numerator are going to cancel, right? And we're going to be left with... Just 16 u squared, all right? All they cancelled, so we're just left with the integral of 16 u squared. Well, that's something we can calculate quite easily. That's just going to be, well, increase the power and divide by the new power. So we're going to have 16 u to the 3 all over 3, and our limits are a quarter and 0, which is going to give me 1 12th, which is 0 0.083 or caring as. We saw a wolf from Alpha. We all saw a wolf from Alpha, right? But that's how you do it the proper way. Right. Hope you enjoyed. Um, give me any suggestions. Let me know how you guys are doing, how your summer's been so far, and I'll see you next time. Yo, guys, subscribe to Mad Math.